Hello everybody, this is Paul from Off Grid Desert Farming with Paul and Adrian. This is April the 12th, 2024. I want to welcome you uh, to our broadcast today. Uh, we have a lot of news to get to, but I wanted to give you a quick internet update. My internet tech guy has just left our house. They changed my satellite dish out again. That's the third satellite dish that they put on there. He said there is absolutely nothing wrong with my equipment. Nothing wrong with my router, nothing wrong with my landline, nothing wrong with my dish. And he said something is blocking my signal. So the only other solution that we have is to put another five feet or six feet on top of the tower uh, or the pole to mount the antenna. But he said something is impeding my signal, my upload signal to the tower and they don't know what it is, but the equipment is working fine according to all of their test equipment. So either uh, some government agency, something uh, that just came out of the blue the last five months is blocking my signal or, uh, or, or something's up with it. So I did want to give you a, a, an update. Uh, it doesn't look like I'm going to be able to get my internet fixed. So I guess the only option is Starlink. If you do want to help us get the Starlink system, we raised about half the money. We still got about half the money to go. Um, I do want to give you the best news, folks, but um, unfortunately, uh, it does look like that somebody has targeted me, this house in particular, uh, and is jamming my upload signal. This is, not, uh, this is not a conspiracy theory. I just talked to my internet guy. This is the fourth time that he's been out to my house in the last three months trying to fix my internet. And they say there's nothing wrong with it. There's nothing wrong with my computer. I just bought a brand new computer. So that's about my only option. Anyway, let's go ahead and get to the news. You're looking at the Alatola Khomeini. This is the spiritual leader of Iran. We are still waiting on a massive attack from Iran on Israel. We have had conflicting news information come in the last 24 hours uh, that the attack has been postponed. Now it's back on, so we really don't know when this attack is going to take place, folks. Uh, we don't know when that's going to happen, but let's go ahead and read some information. I'm going to try to bring you up to date. By the time that you see this, this is going to be about seven or eight hours later. We're taping this about 1.23 in the afternoon uh, because I had to deal with my internet guy. But uh, you're going to be getting this later tonight, so anything could happen in seven, eight hours. Alatola Khomeini on the Israeli attack on Iranian embassy in Damascus. We will make them regret this crime. Iran's mission to the United Nations sent a letter to the members of the UN Security Council. So this is the information we come in. Uh, also, uh, embassies around the world are telling their citizens not to go to Israel, to, and they are evacuating uh, the embassies in Israel. According to the Iranian news agency, the IRNA, Tehran made it clear that if those responsible for the attack on the Iranian embassy in Damascus had been prosecuted, there would be no reason to punish the Zionists. The supreme leader of the Islamic revolution, Ayatollah al-Khomeini, in his message on the occasion of the death of the Iranian officials by Israel in the Iranian embassy in Damascus threatened that we will make them regret this crime and similar ones. The Iranian mission to the UN emphasized that if the Security Council had condemned the Zionist regime encroachment on our diplomatic facilities in Damascus and then prosecuted its perpetrators, perhaps there would be no need for Iran to punish this Regime. So this is the latest out of Iran. This is uh, the latest statement from Alatola Khomeini. Uh, so much news coming in, folks. Um, let me keep on going. We did that article before. So let's go to a new article here. Uh, Qatar and Kuwait has forbidden the United States of America... Uh, from using their bases to attack Iran. I think that I have that up right now. This is some of the uh, information we have that the United States military has requested uh, that these military bases that we have in uh, Kuwait, 
uh, the UAE and Saudi Arabia uh, to use to attack Iran? They said no. So Qatar and Kuwait informed the United States that they cannot use U.S. bases on their territories against Iran. This move seriously reduces U.S. capabilities in the region. Qatar is by far the largest U.S. base in the entire Middle East, as shown on the image below. So this is the, um, this is the different military bases that we have in the Middle East. Uh, this is Syria, Iraq, Kuwait, Bahrain, uh, Qatar, the UAE, or the United Arab Emirates, Saudi Arabia, and Jordan. So uh, this is going to make it difficult for us to attack uh, Iran. He said it also indicates that the U.S. asked permission to do exactly that to hit Iran. So folks, uh, things are getting dicey. Uh, we don't know... Um, how this is going to go. This is also breaking news. Jerusalem Post warning Israelis of Iran nuclear strike. So in Israel, they're working the people up into a frenzy. The Jerusalem Post newspaper today is warning Israelis about the effect of nuclear radiation should Iran attack Israel. The story entitled Health Effects of an Iranian Nuclear Strike on Israel some key insights here. So no one really knows if Iran has a nuclear bomb yet, folks. We don't really know. But these are the headlines coming in. Gold and silver and oil are spiking as investors believe serious conflict of uh, Iran and Israel. France evacuates families of diplomats from Israel. The UK tells its citizens to leave Israel. U.S. issues travel warning to Israel attack at any moment. Uh, India has issued travel warnings for Israel and Iran. These are all the breaking news headlines. I'm just going to go down the list. Um, so many crazy things happening. Let me go to another page. We do have some breaking news um, that has just come in in the last hour that Russia has test launched a Topol M intercontinental ballistic missile which has terrorized the Middle East. Moscow shields Iran just before the launch uh, uh, of an attack against Israel. So Russia has today test launches one, uh, one of their Topol, uh, Topol uh, ICBMs in a message to the United States and NATO that if Israel and the United States attack Iran, then they are going to have to deal with Russia. So Russia sent a clear message to the United States and Israel that if you retaliate from an Iranian strike, we will cover Iran with our nuclear umbrella. A strong message of Iran's protection was sent by Russia in a little while ago with the launch of an ICBM Topol M intercontinental ballistic missile, which was visible throughout the Middle East, causing alarm in several capitals, even in CENTCOM. The missile was seen passing by through the airspace of Syria, Iraq, and Iran, but this was due to the trajectory of the intercontinental ballistic missile in eastern Kazakhstan. It is typical that international media spoke of an unidentified object which was spotted in Iranian airspace and then over the areas of Dila, Wasit, Babil, and Sinjar in northwestern Iraq near the border of Syria. Moscow chose this particular moment a few hours ago before the attack by Iran to send a clear message to the United States and Israel, don't react to the oncoming Iranian attack. So this is a video... You can see uh, this is the uh, Russian missile right here uh, that Russia launched, and it was clearly visible in the Middle East. People were freaking out. They did not know what it was, but um, Russia is sending a clear message, don't mess with Iran. So we'll have to see how this goes, folks. Um, I just wanted to bring you updated information that there could be multiple countries involved. 
This is more breaking news. France evacuates families of diplomats from Israel. The UK tells its citizens to leave Israel. These are all headlines. Get out of Iran and Israel. France, India, Norway ask locked a large Iranian attack with hundreds of drones and missiles, maybe tonight, says the USA. So already it is nighttime in Israel. The U.S. diplomatic marathon to avoid fatalities. So this is a picture of, I believe, the uh, some of the Iranian drones ready to be launched against Israel. Folks, if this attack does happen, this will be the closest that we've come to nuclear war uh, in, a, uh, in a very long time, folks, if this Iran attack actually happens against Israel. Middle East countries are now on red alert, as U.S. officials have told CBS News, that a major Iranian attack on Israel is expected as early as Friday. Well, that is today. The Americans are describing an Iranian attack, which, if it happens, will open the door to a madhouse in the Middle East. According to the Americans, the attack may include hundreds, hundreds of drones to saturate Israeli air defenses with more than 100 missiles aimed at military targets inside Israel. All of them will participate in the attack. The Shia militias in Syria, Iraq, Yemen, Hezbollah, while in the end, Iran will be hit soon after the Israeli media leaked that Israel was preparing for the worst-case scenario that U.S. officials believe could materialize within hours, the possibility of an immediate attack on Israeli soil by Iran. They also noted that the IDF and Mossad have approved plans to attack Iran if Tehran attacks Israel from its soil. This is from Jason Broski. Two U.S. officials told CBS News that a major Iran attack against Israel was expected as soon as Friday, possibly to include more than 100 drones and dozens of missiles aimed at military targets inside of Israel. So, folks, this is getting real. This is not some uh, speculation. Uh, things are heating up in the world, and uh, I'm not going to read the entire article. We don't have that much time. But uh, this is the breaking news uh, that is coming in. Israel, the United States Navy destroyer, Arlick Burke class sails into Israeli waters to provide anti-ballistic protection in case of a possible Iranian attack. It is expected to help intercept missiles and drone launched by Iran. Uh, so this is one of our U.S. warships. This is an Arley Burke class a destroyer that has the Aegeus missile system on it. One of these have been deployed off the coast of Israel. Channel 14 in Israel is reporting that the U.S. Navy advanced missile ship, likely an Arleigh Burke class guided missile destroyer, has arrived off of the coast of Israel to help intercept missiles and drones fired by the Iranians and or Iran-backed mediation groups against Israel. So, like I said, this is the breaking news coming in. We have so much news, folks. It is uh, so hard to get to everything. I'm just going to read headlines now for the next few minutes to try to catch you up on all the uh, breaking news. Vladimir Putin orders fundraising uh, funding increase for space-based nuclear energy. Uh, Russia and China is uh, planning on building a nuclear power plant on the moon, folks. This is not science fiction. This is breaking news. Russia and China are planning on building a nuclear power plant and setting up a colony on the moon. So Putin has authorized funding for this to take place. This is also breaking news. West gets fantastic value out of Ukraine. Boris Johnson. Boris Johnson, the former leader of the UK, he said, Kiev is fighting for our interest. Folks, listen to this. This is the guy that scuttled the peace agreement that was ready to be signed by Russia and Ukraine. This man right here, him, scuttled the peace agreement. We could have peace in Ukraine right now if it wasn't for this man. NATO sent him over there, the United States. So he's saying that Kiev is fighting for our interest, not their own interest. They're fighting for the United States and NATO. He said the Ukrainians are fighting for the West right, or the West fight with Russia, and do not ask for much. So the money... 
the money and resources that we put into that country generate fantastic values, according to former Prime Minister Boris Johnson, the politician who reportedly personally derailed the peace agreement between Moscow and Kiev in 2022 discussed his policy choices on Thursday with students at Georgetown University, one of the leading breeding grounds of American political elites. So this man, folks, I'm sorry. No matter what you want to think, this man right here is responsible for hundreds of thousands of Ukrainian men and women dying, hundreds of thousands of men and women being killed. This man right here is a genocidal maniac because he went over and told Zelensky not to sign the peace agreement with Russia, which would have ended the war. Nobody would have been killed. Ukraine would still be intact, and their country would not have been destroyed. So this is the breaking news. Let's keep on going. There's a lot of breaking news. NATO countries now are preparing their populations for war. All civilians in Lithuania may join the military reserve units the country's defense minister has announced. So it does look like that NATO wants a war more than they want a T-bone steak, folks. They've been salivating with a war with Russia for 20 or 30 years. Now they're preparing their populations to go to war with Russia. Lithuania is establishing permanent military training centers that will operate nationwide to prepare personnel to serve in the rear during a war with Russia. Defense Minister Lari Nas Kasinas told reporters on Friday, a total of 27 command headquarters are due to be fully operational next year and will be set up in the major cities of the NATO member countries in an order uh, in an effort to prepare the public to send deterrent signals to the enemy. The Baltic State's Defense Minister expects such command posts to be a link between Lithuanian armed forces and the citizens who can defend the country with arms. Folks, you know, this war could be over tomorrow. All Joe Biden has to do is call President Vladimir Putin up and say, Mr. Putin, let's sit down at the negotiating table. Let's work out a deal. Let's end this war where everybody is satisfied. Everybody is secure of their uh, their own borders. And let's end the war. They could do that tomorrow, but they don't want to do it. We also have breaking news. Russian military instructors are being deployed to Niger. Nigerian uh, military rulers discussed security operation with President Vladimir Putin last month. So Russia is sending uh, a lot of their soldiers to Niger, the country, and will be training their military. So that's another headline uh, coming in. Here is another headline. Top U.S. general spotted at Central Israeli Air Base just as an attack from Iran looms. At a moment, U.S. intelligence has indicated that Iran could strike the Israeli soil in the next 24 to 48 hours. A top U.S. general was spotted at an air base in central Israel on Friday. U.S. Central Command CENTCOM Chief Michael Eric Kurilla met with the Israeli Defense Minister Yovan Galat at Hatzar Air Base a short while ago. According to the Times of Israel military con- uh, correspondent Emmanuel Fabian, the two defense officials discuss readiness for an Iranian attack against the state of Israel, which may lead the, uh, the area into a regional escalation. An official statement by the uh, visit by Kalant said, given it could be bombs away at any moment, it is a good idea for American top regional general to be hanging out at one of the very bases that could be directly targeted. So this is a picture of the U.S. general right here. This is the uh, Israeli defense minister and another Israeli defense minister. Uh, We do have our top general now of CENTCOM Major uh, General Michael Eric Carilla in Israel to coordinate any kind of uh, uh, counterattack against Iran. Like I said, things are heating up all over the world. This is also breaking news. Russia demanded UN's unconditional surrender of Ukraine. Moscow hardens its position to go to the end unless it, uh, unless Ukraine surrenders. This is also breaking news. Uh, we just showed you that one. Let's keep on going. We got a few more minutes, folks. Um, 
Let's go to a Wall Street Journal. This is just coming in. Uh, Iranian attack expected on Israel in the next two days. Uh, this is dated yesterday. So we're in the window of opportunity, folks. I don't know when this is going to happen, uh, but everybody expects uh, some kind of Iranian uh, response uh, to take place shortly. So this is the breaking news. We're going to cut it short a little bit today. We're going to do a shorter broadcast. Uh, but I did want to bring you the latest news on what is happening in the world. If you do not know Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, please do not waste any time, folks. Time is growing short. If this man, Alatollah Khomeini, orders a massive attack against Israel, then we could see Israel and the United States hitting Iranian nuclear sites. We could see a major escalation in the war. Uh, and this thing uh, could get out of hand very quickly. So I'm going to give you an opportunity. If you don't know Jesus, if you're not sure of your salvation, if you will bow your head, repent of your sins, Jesus Christ will save you right now wherever you are. Just say, Dear Jesus, I know that I'm a sinner, Lord, and I ask you right now to forgive me of all of my sins and wash them away with your precious blood. I do believe that you are the Son of God. And I do believe that you died on that cross and you shed your blood for me and you rose again the third day. Thank you, Jesus, for saving my soul. Thank you, Jesus, for forgiving all of my sins. And thank you, Jesus, for giving me eternal life. Amen. Now, if you said that prayer, you are saved and you are born again, according to the Bible. But folks, you know, all I can tell you is just be prepared. Love your family while you still can. Do good to others. Uh, do what Jesus tells us to do, to love the Lord your God with all your heart, your soul, and your mind. Love your neighbor as yourself. Forgive your enemies. Pray for your enemies. Walk in love toward everybody, folks. Let's be a light in this world. Let's don't be a hindrance. Let's be a light. Let's try to win as many people to Jesus Christ as possible before the end comes. So thank you for watching our broadcast. God bless you. Please share our videos out. Um, so many things happening in Ukraine, so many things happening in the United States. Uh, we'll try to keep you updated. And if, if there is something major happen, I will go live. Even though my internet is not working very good, I will go live and try to bring you all of that information. So God bless you. Remember, Jesus Christ loves you. He's coming back soon. Don't be caught dead without him. Bye-bye.